You might want to pick up these tools that will make building much easier. And that's an electric glue gun, a miniature flexible claw grip, a soldering iron, a small drill bit, Phillips screwdriver, i.e. safety wire pliers, hex nut drivers, and of course needle nose and cutters. If you're using the air retracts, you also need a retract pump to pump up the tank. This is the way the fiberglass ducts fit in. The optional retracts are absolutely gorgeous. They have circlips along all of the pivot points, shock absorbing. Uh, really nice. The only thing you got to do is tighten up the screws on the actual retract assembly itself because mine were loose, all of them. Okay, once you re-glue this little control rod in here, then this goes, this is nice. It's already cut out for you. And then we put the hinges in, all cut out. Everything just fits so perfectly. Now I'll put the, um, the super glue in the hinges. Thin. These balls have to remain the exact same height, so make sure you bend them because otherwise the, uh, it won't travel the same distance. And uh, here's how the uh, rudder will work. That's the nearest I can figure it out.
Make sure you don't pump more than 30 pump strokes because if you do, you'll blow a hole in the hose right near the end of the pump because it gets hot there while you're pumping. With the nose wheel steering retract, you have to have a flexible line to connect to the servo. Here I used cable and uh, it flexes like that's the way it's supposed to work. You'll need to get some Dean's type connectors to hook up the batteries and the electronic speed controls and the bullet connectors for the BEC. Aileron servos must be glued in with the blocks provided. You have to glue the servo and the block in at the same time. F4 Phantom from Nitro Planes. All right, plugging in the batteries. Radio is on. It's beautiful. It's heavy. It's got retracts. I'm gonna take it down here. I have no idea how much runway this is gonna need.
I think I'm gonna get another one just so I have a spare. <laughs>